Hey, this is Old Man Metal, and welcome to the afterword to the first episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I want to thank everyone who watched the first episode, put that out a few days ago. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you can find it on YouTube, which is probably where you're watching this, because right now that's where all this stuff is going. Um, eventually I'll get to the point where I'm pushing it out to some other places, but for right now, YouTube's the easiest. And uh, so thanks if you watched it, and thanks to the United Metal Forces crew on Twitter for doing such a good job of letting everyone know about the podcast. I pushed it out uh, Sunday about midnight, which is not prime time at all, and as soon as I pushed it out, uh, my metal buddies on Twitter started retweeting it, and within the first 12 hours I had about 2,000 impressions, which is a lot more than I normally get on my tweets. Anyhow, uh, that's a really good tweet for me to get 2,000, and it happened in about 12 hours, so uh, just appreciate everyone getting the word out there. And um, also want to thank Burial Beer Company for providing today's show beer. Burial is uh, located in Asheville, North Carolina. They make some fantastic beer. Um, if you're into good beer, you've probably heard of them, especially if you're from North Carolina and you are into good beer. So I uh, want to thank them for the show beer today as I almost knocked my damn microphone over. And uh, said show beer is Shadow Clock Pilsner. Uh, it's a fantastic Pilsner that they make. And um, it's a staple in my fridge. I drink a lot of this stuff. It's a uh, really, really, you know, it looks like I shook it up a little bit. But it's a really, really solid beer. And um, it's a German-style Pilsner. But honestly, it's so well-balanced, uh, the, the malt and the, and the hops. It really doesn't have a whole lot of perceived bitterness. It comes across to me more like a, a, a softer Czech Pilsner than anything else. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's officially a German-style Pilsner. Um, Swedish cookie dough malt, the typical spicy, noblish hops. Um, you get a little bit of yeast, which is something that I notice with burial beers that are, is a little bit different. Uh, you get a little bit of yeast off of it, which is kind of nice. Not a whole lot, but, but a bit. It's nice. It's a different change. Um, and it's like most Pilsners. It's very light-bodied, uh, very clean finish, very refreshing, and um, good peppery carbonation. So, mm. Is just a good beer all around, very drinkable. I drink a whole lot of it. So thanks to Burial. Uh, thanks to the fine folks at uh, Hay Beer in Wilmington. They're the ones who uh, brought it down here so that I could purchase it and drink it um, while I was talking to you. One of the cool things about Burial, and I'll just point this out real quick, is their artwork. Um, it's a guy named David Paul Seymour does their artwork. And um, that's the front of the can. Little bunny, little bunny, 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 hopping around, got himself in trouble, got the thorns. And you think, oh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty rough. Why would you put that on a beer can? And well, the flip side is the the after. So maybe that's uh, maybe even a little bit funkier. But uh, anyhow, if you're into the kind of music that I'm into and the kind of twisted, sick shit that I like, it's pretty good artwork. So that's another thing I like about Burial is their artwork. Um, so anyhow, cheers to Burial. Cheers to Hay Beer. Cheers to you for being here. And. I'm doing this afterward because I wanted to say a few things about the first episode. Um, it took me a while to make, and I've thought about it a lot while I was making it, so had a few comments, so I figured I'd do a real quick afterward. This won't be long. Um, I don't know that I'll do an afterward for every episode. Uh, probably not, but for this one, at least, I felt like I'd needed to, so that's what I'm going to do. And it also took me so long to do, I wanted to like get right back in the saddle and prove to myself that I could do one real quick, um, as opposed to as long as it took me to do this one, so... The first thing I want to address is the obvious one. Um, the subject matter of the podcast was my favorite songs or some of my favorite songs from 2018. And I know you're thinking, dude, I know your name is Old Man Metal, but it's friggin' June. Could you be a little bit more timely with your topics? Um, and I hear that, and I'm thinking the same thing. Fact is, I started on this podcast in January. That's when I started scripting it. Um, and I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, follow me on Pulpit of Doom, or if you listen to the last episode, because I talked about it on the air, on there, rather, you know that uh, I was uh, displaced by the hurricane, Hurricane uh, Florence, that hit Wilmington. And um, so I had to move a couple of times. Um, I had some other stuff going on in my personal life, good stuff, um, but things that dragged me away from working on little projects like this. So I had a lot of distractions. The second thing is I had a hell of a lot to learn. I've never done a podcast before in terms of producing, and I talked about that a little bit on the episode, so I won't belabor the point, but I had lots to learn. I had to learn uh, audio editing software. I had to learn broadcasting software, video editing software, and I had never used any of that stuff. So that took me some doing to uh, learn those things. And um, 
I feel like I did a really good job of learning the intro level and maybe a little bit more than that. So I got a lot out of it, um, but it did take some time to learn the software. So that was another thing that really slowed me down was learning the software. <clears throat> the third thing that slowed me down... Mm, God damn, that's good. The third thing that slowed me down... I said this in the episode. I said I made the decision not to use video um, because I didn't want to spend the time learning how to use the video camera and, the, and hooking that up to the computer and all that different stuff. It was just a would have brought a new piece of hardware to the mix. I've never done video before, so I said, well, I'm just going to make things simple for myself and just use images because I, I know how to do images. That's pretty simple, and I've been using Photoshop for years. So, um, Turned out I probably would have saved myself a lot of time if I'd just gone ahead and used video because... Um, in picking images to use, it took a hell of a long time. And if you watch the podcast, you see I used images to um, represent some fairly abstract concepts like uh, epic triumphalism that you hear in some music. So it took some thinking to come up with the images and then some time to do it. And the other thing is um, you can't just use any images or any video in a podcast. You'll get hit with a copyright strike and you'll get screwed. So I had to find images that were public domain or that people had said that, you know, you can use it for this, you can use it for that. So that's another thing that took a while was getting the uh, getting all the pictures together, finding the right pictures that I could use. Perfect example in the podcast when I say uh, Unleashed uh, hit it out of the park with this album. I've got this perfect picture of a, a baseball batter. You can tell he's just swung. You can tell by his posture, the, the catcher's posture, that he just knocked it the fuck out of the park. Um, it took me a long while to find a picture that conveyed that just by the way it looked and everyone's body language that was licensed to where I could use it. Um, so that took some time, and I sort of had some regrets about that. But then the people that have, have given me feedback about the podcast, one thing that they've said is that they like the images because my choice of images sort of let my sense of humor show through. So I'm sort of of two minds about that. You know, it, it, it took a lot of extra time, but at the same time, a lot of people tell me, hey, that sort of made your podcast a little bit different, and I liked it. So I think moving forward, maybe I need to use some video um, uh, to make it take up a little bit less time to do, but it sounds like uh, people like the pictures too. And if you've got an opinion on that, I'd love to hear it in the comments. You know, just comment down below and uh, let me know. In the first podcast, did you like my use of images? Did you think, you know, would you rather just watch me talk? Um, I think, you know, probably too much of that would be boring, but anyhow. So just let me know. And, I'm, you know, that's one of the things that I'm thinking about is using, obviously, I'm using video now because this whole damn thing is video because it's, it's easy. In video, you shoot it, you edit it, and it's done. So um, that's, that's the third thing that really slowed me down. The other good thing about it is I'm really good with the slideshow on OBS now. I can play that thing like a friggin' calliope. So that's one good thing that, uh, that I got out of it is using that a lot. So the first thing I learned is use video, um, at least in part. And so with my current laptop, I figured out I can edit 1080p. I shot the first episode in 720p because I didn't know if I was going to be able to do 1080, and I didn't want to get hung up on that. So I shot the first one in 720, which is sort of the, the minimum for YouTube. Um, 1080p is what most people use. And um, so I figured out with my laptop that I've got, I can edit 1080p. It's kind of kludgy. I can render it. It takes a while. Um, when I render the first podcast in 720p, it took 17 minutes to render a 19-minute podcast. So that's about one-to-one. -one. Uh, my test clip was about two minutes when I shot 1080p and rendered it, and it took nine minutes. So you're talking about four and a half times as long. Um, the other thing is that OBS really pushes the limits of the laptop that I've got, and it's an older laptop. It's a it's an it's an i5, but it's an older i5, and um, or what is it? the hell? Yeah, i5, Core i5. That's what it's called. I'm not a, a techie necessarily, so it's an older one. Doesn't have as much memory as it could have. The other thing I figured out is that OBS really really slows it down. Um, and OBS rendered all the video just fine when it was all said and done, but the audio came out sounding like shit out of OBS every time. And I figured out if I rendered it 10 times, I would have one that sounded a lot better than the other, so it was just luck of the draw. But um, the fact of the matter is uh, that, that OBS would not produce usable output in terms of the audio. And that wasn't a big deal because I just pulled the video into the video editing software shortcut, to, which I had to do to piece it together anyhow. And um, I just pulled in the original audio that I had in WAV files and, and just did an overdub audio track. And that's why, it, you know, it sounds good because um, I use the original recordings as the, as the soundtrack to the video. Um, so I can get away with using the computer that I've got right now. But um, I really don't want to have to spend that much time rendering. And the fact of the matter is um, Shotcut is kind of kludgy anyhow. And I would get better performance editing if I had a, a newer laptop. 
And the other thing is I want to get to the point where I'm podcasting using OBS on the fly. Because if you're using OBS to do a live podcast or using it on the fly, um, it shortens your, your work path a lot. And if you want to do live podcasts, you've got to be able to use it. So um, I need OBS Studio to work right anyhow. So pretty much what I figured out is that I need a new laptop. And that's perfectly cool. I don't have a problem with needing a new laptop. The one that I've got is old. It's, you know, I've had it for a while. I can justify putting the money into a new one. I have a tendency to get to talking and let my beer sit. I need to not do that. Um, hopefully you're not doing that. Hopefully you're sipping on yours while you're listening to me, not letting your gear, beer get warm. Not that it's warm yet, but... So, overall... I'm really pleased with what I did for our first go. Um, I got a lot of positive feedback from people that I know that watched it and from people online that I know that watched it. There were two predominant themes. One of them was I learned something, which kind of surprised me. Um, it's always nice when you hear that. You do something and someone's like, oh, well, you know, I've never thought about it like that. Or, you know, I've never really looked at it through the lens that you're looking at it through. Um, the other thing is that um, a lot of people that know me have told me that my sense of humor really shows through in the way I did it. And that's cool because that's, you know, I want it to be me and come across as me and seem like something that I did. So, um, and, and personally, I got a real sense of satisfaction and, and probably the fact that I worked on it since friggin' January has something to do with it. But when I finally rendered it and got done and watched it, I felt really good about it. And, you know, I accomplish shit every day in my life. I'm not one of those people that sits around and just, you know, does the drone thing and does what they do for a living and that's it. I accomplish stuff all the time. So I've, you know, I've got to the point where I don't get that rush of accomplishment that a lot of people who like aren't big, big output people get. Um, I'm used to accomplishing things every day and it's just sort of like you accomplish something, you finish it, you move on to the next thing. But I really felt good about this watching it afterwards. So that was cool too. That's sort of an internal validation that, that I, I did a good job on it. Um, obviously there's a lot of room for layout improvement, especially the song title bar. If you watch the songs when they're playing, I had the little title bar underneath it that had the name of the artist and the name of the song. And um, that was just some cheesy looking shit, but it was really easy to do and I needed something there. So I don't feel bad about the fact that I did it, but definitely the layout. I cut some corners on spending a, a whole shitload of time on layout because I had other things that were, that were bogging me down. So still haven't picked a font, but that's a pretty easy thing. I just use Arial for now because that's why everyone uses Arial because it's a reasonable looking font. Um, I did get the logo the way I wanted it, though. I wanted to get that piece of uh, branding right up front. So if you look down in the corner, you'll see the logo. And um, and uh, so I got that the way I wanted it. So, And I'll admit, you know, I'm not a world-class layout guy anyhow. I've done website design freelance for a living way back in the day. My design skills in terms of things working are great. Um, the stuff that I build works really well. Um, I'm not the artistic sort necessarily, so my layout's not going to be the most mind-blowing, earth-shattering shit you've ever seen. It's just not going to be. But it can definitely be a lot better than what I did for the first episode, so room for improvement there. Um, so summarizing, you know, what did I get out of this episode? Um, well, I put out my first podcast, so I, I did it and proved to myself that I can do it. Um, I learned some new software that lets me communicate in a completely new, different way, which is really cool. You know, like I said, I've been building websites for decades and communicating with the world that way and other things that I, that I know how to do. But So podcasting is kind of new, and it's always cool to put a new tool in the toolbox. Um, I've never delved into songs quite that deeply. I've been working on trying to up my critical analysis game really since 2004, um, when I started posting on Metal Rules and when I started there, I was basically, uh, oh, it rocks, dude. It just rocks. And that's about the best I could tell you why I like something. Um, so over the years, I've gotten better at that. And this sort of took it maybe to a little bit of a new le newer level or a higher level because I'd never really gone into songs quite as deeply in the detail that I did in the, uh, in the podcast. So that was cool. Um, and I'm a firm believer if you stop learning, you're dead. Um, you know, as, as old as you get, as much as you've got going on, you've always got to be learning new stuff. You've always got to be trying new stuff. If you stop learning, you're, you're fucking dead. You might as well get in the box and be done with it. And so, um, this was learning and that's a good thing. You know, like I said, if, if you stop learning, then, then that's going to be the end of you. So good podcast. Um, I ran a lot longer on this than I meant to, but anyhow, um, I hope you stuck with me till the end. If you, if you're listening to this, then you did stick with me till the end. And, um, since you did, I hope you're drinking a beer right now and enjoying it too. Since you stuck with me this far, I'm going to give you a little exclusive and that is, um, the next podcast. Cause I already know what it's going to be. I already know what it's going to be about. It's going to be about something different. It's not going to be about metal. Oh, 
Tell me about that beast right there. Benchmade Nakamura 484S. Beautiful, beautiful blade. It's my everyday carry. I've got uh, about a little bit over a year in on it, and so I've got some things to say about that. And so that's what I'm going to do for the next podcast, change gears a little bit. So be sure not to miss that. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm all about metal, firearms, capsaicin, good beer. Those are my four things. So the podcast is going to be mostly me talking about those things. And as far as I'm concerned, guns and knives go together like fucking peanut butter and tuna or whatever. So um, if I'm talking about guns, I'm going to be talking about blades too. So that's the next one, the Benchmade, what I think about it, what experiences I've had with it. Um Oh, so damn good. So, subscribe to me here. Um, If you enjoy what you're seeing, make sure that you don't miss anything. I'm going to be putting out new content on the regular. Um, Comment below. Let me know what you think. Interested in hearing what you think, what I can do better, what I've done great, things that you might want to see me talk about. Um, So, get involved. Tell Tell me what you think. If you really want to get involved, follow me on Twitter. I'm on there every day. Um, I'm very active on Twitter. Um, I'm not on any other social media, and I'm not active where you're going to find me online, a whole bunch of other places, unless you um, go to dreamanddemon.com, and I'm on there every day, too. Um, But you might not want to read stories about baby rape and and dogs getting killed and sick, fucked up, twisted true crime and shit like that. So if you don't want to read that crap and you want to keep up with me, follow me on Twitter, at OldManMetalOG. Um, also while you're there, check out United Metal Forces. That's hashtag United Metal Forces. That's the metal Twitter crew that I run with. Awesome bunch of guys talk about great metal all day long. If you're having trouble keeping up with what's coming out, having trouble finding new metal, bored with the shit you're listening to, get on Twitter, start following the people on, uh, United Metal Forces and you'll learn a shitload. So once again, thanks for joining me. I'm Old Man Metal. Uh, appreciate you joining me today. I'm going to push this out and, uh, get to working on the next podcast. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get you fucking friends. Until next time, keep those horns the fuck up high. Take care. <laughs>